All right. Uh, my name is Fabrice Muni. Uh, I'm calling in from uh, the north of Norway, where the sun doesn't set, um, where I'm visiting my mother for the holidays. And uh, today I'll be talking to you about uh, Angular Schematics. And uh, a little background. I have been working with Angular since uh, the AngularJS times, but uh, professionally since Angular 2. And um, I don't consider myself an expert in a way. I, I, I like learning. I dig deep. And I've been uh, wanting to learn about schematics for a while now. And uh, it's been a tough uh, ride. But I uh, noticed that uh, when I have purpose, then it's easier to learn. So while working, uh, I came to a situation where I was doing a lot of manual steps each time I was starting a new project. And uh, these steps involved creating a new project, applying straight compiler settings, adding prettier config, styling, lint, uh, lint staged, husky, and lately web vitals analytics and, and so more. And I just kept doing this stuff all the time and things change and there's some inconsistencies. And so I wondered, um, how can I uh, make this uh, process repeatable and uh, basically automate it? And um, one option was to have like a base project which I can base things, things off. But another one is uh, actually creating a schematic that I could apply to my project uh, and then have it basically apply or whatever settings that I need to apply uh, company-wide. So uh, in this talk, uh, I'll just go through the first three steps. Uh, so basically creating a new project using the Angular CLI, applying strict compiler settings, uh, adding prettier to and uh, the accompanying configurations. All right. So anybody who's used uh, ang the Angular, uh, who's created an Angular bef uh, project before knows the engineer command. Uh, what's new is the dash dash strict that uh, Alex was talking about. So um, this took care of some of my requirements, uh, which is basically applying the strict um, TypeScript settings and um, uh, Angular compiler settings. And uh, basically, uh, this is an, ex an uh, extract from a typical TS config file. Uh, I want all the highlighted, uh, highlighted uh, properties to be set to true. Some of them are standard, uh, like strict, true, but no unused local locals, no unused parameters are some things I want on top of what's provided by the dash dash strict flag. Uh, prettier, uh, the basic uh, steps of adding it is adding it uh, to your, to, as a dependency and then adding uh, the configuration either through package JSON or uh, the multiple ways of doing that. In my case, I just prefer having the prettier, uh, dot prettier RC uh, and prettier ignore files. All right, let's go a bit deeper. So what is a schematic? Uh, from the Angular documentation side, it says a schematic is a template-based code generator that supports complex logic. It is a set of instructions for transforming a software project by generating or modifying code. So according to my requirements, I have an existing project. I want, I want to transform it to meet some kind of uh, standard that uh, I've set. So I'm thinking, okay, this suits uh, suits me perfectly. All right, so how do you get started? Again, by digging through the documentation site, I found out, okay, the schematics actually have a, have a CLI, which you add, uh, you can install globally, uh, as shown on the screen. And then you just run schematic blank is a template, basically, and the name of the schematic you want. In this case, we are creating a blank schematic uh, called Hello World. All right, so when you run that command, this is what's generated. Uh, this is again straight from the documentation side. You can find it there. Uh, so a schematic is basically a project that has a collection collection.json file uh, that's uh, kind of a manifest 
uh, of all the existing uh, schematics in the project. So if you look at this image here, we have uh, a factory property on the Hello World that points to the Hello World function inside the Hello World uh, directory uh, and the index file. So you could add more schematics uh, to the project like this. And if you look at uh, projects like Angular, if you look dig to the source code of Angular or Angular components or NGRX and look at their schematics, you'll find a similar structure like this. And I highly recommend, recommend to do that. It's, an, it's, a, it's a very easy way of learning how to use schematics. All right, uh, when you write a schematic, so in this case, we have a hello world schematic, you have a, a few concepts to kind of uh, be aware of. You have rules and you have actions. So every uh, schematic is basically a function, which is a rule that returns a function that takes a tree and a context and returns another rule. And the property of a rule is that it is, um, uh, what's the word? It is uh, a pure function, basically. Uh, which means you can compose them in multiple ways. Uh, a tree is a representation of the file system on your disk, uh, on, of your project. Uh, and by the way, schematics are not Angular specific. This can be, they can be used uh, in other projects. It just so happens that uh, Angular has basically built schematics into the CLI, which enables us to, to use them for uh, transformations in uh, Angular projects. Uh, context is just um, uh, an object that gives you some properties to manipulate uh, the tree or some functions to manipulate the tree. All right, so let's say I've already pu published my schematic uh, on NPM under k 30 angular star And if you want to add this to your project, you have to run ng add and then the name of the, of the library for it to to be added to your project. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this uh, through other uh, libraries like uh, Angular Materia, for example. These basically follow the same principle. All right, so once you generate the schematic, I uh, usually get a build and a test script. I've added the build watch, which enables me to basically rebuild my project uh, as, as I'm changing it. So it is a nice thing to add there uh, for reference. All right. So you run yarn build watch. So you basically get a you, you get a rebuild, and then to actually test the schematic, you run schematic. This is basically the global schematic you've installed, and then uh, the period, the starting period, is basically pointed to the project you have, and then the ng add is the schematic you want to run. So in our case, when you do ng add it's actually going to look for a schematic called ng-add. It's a basically specific schematic. You know you can have other schematics. So when you do ng-generate, that's another schematic. Uh, so there's different types of schematics. But in this case, when, you are, when you're adding a new library to your project, you use ng-add. There's also the ng-update for updating schematics and uh, with migrations and stuff like that. All right. So as I said initially, uh, the way I found worked for me, this is for me, is having a goal helps you um, kind of um, narrow your focus on what you want to achieve because there's a lot you can do with schematics and a lot of the stuff is not well documented. So there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, articles around on, on the internet for how to do different things. But when you start with the goal in mind, it becomes easier for you to know where to look. So in my case, I'll basically look, okay, I want to add, I want to basically go from a new project and transform it to something. And uh, then I'll have to uh, look, uh, think back, okay, when was the last time I did that? Then I remember, okay, last time I created a project, added, uh, and I added another library through ng-add. And okay, then let me look at that library. Most, in most cases, Angular Material. Then I look at their schematics and say, okay, how are they doing things? How are they modifying things? Then I have that as a basically, as a stepping stone to achieving uh, what I want to do. All right, and uh, here I just uh, uh, linked to a couple of uh, articles that helped me uh, get again uh, getting started. Um, I would uh, I would 
I would re uh, recommend you to read them in the in the in the um, in the provided order. Uh, on top of that, as I said earlier, look uh, read through the source code of other existing schematics. You have you go you have you're gonna learn a lot about how to use them correctly and what they're supposed to do. Uh, and then uh, schematics also provide a, a lot of utility functions that were used by Angular, in, uh, and then they were basically out, uh, open sourced or basically provided uh, through the public API, which makes it easier to manipulate uh, the workspace files and uh, whatever, whatever, anything basically you would like to do. These are pretty low level, but so far they are the, uh, the things I could find to help me achieve what I wanted to do. All right. Let's uh, look through some code. All right, so I have a project here. Um, so I've generated as a, a schematic project. As you can see, I have a collection JSON with an ng-add uh, schematic. This is the one the Angular CLI is going to look for when you do ng-add. And as I say, this is this lives under ng-add index, and it's calling a function called ng-add, or a rule called ng-add to be specific. So if I go into ng-add here, I have a bunch of files that have been generated uh, from running this. I could uh, remove them, but it's this is it's the same thing. Um, so if I look at the index uh, ts. So this is basically how a rule looks like. You have an ng add, it returns a function which takes a tree under context. And in this case, I just console log the tree where in this case, because I'll be testing in the schematic project, I can actually show you how to read files in the schematic project. So if you look at the schematic project, I have a readme file here. And when I run this, so I'm using tree.read. I'm passing in the name of the file I want to read. Uh, and if this one nested, I would just have to do Unix type uh, nesting to read the file. And then the first part here returns a buffer and I convert that to a string. So in this case, I can run this quickly, show you. So I'm calling schematics, uh, the ng add schematic. All right. And then Basically, on the, in the terminal, I can see the contents of the readme. Well, I could change this to something else just to show you. Wait, let me try on lock. It's a good idea. Oh, yeah, of course. I have to rebuild this in order to run because now it's running with the old build. So if I do yarn build, Watch. It's uh, referencing this. Yeah, so that's been built. If I run this again, you see now that I got the uh, the output of the yarn uh, log file. All right. So let's through my first case. I wanted to apply uh, strict settings. Uh, by strict settings, um, I'm gonna just re enable that. I'm gonna comment out this. I have an Angular, new Angular project here called ng9. Uh, I can do a git status. Uh, so I can move changes there. It's better. There's nothing in there. If I look at um, uh, yes, config base. Uh, so you see, you have the strict true, which comes by default when you use the dash the dash dash strict for, uh, command or flag. The, that's it. And then under the Angular compiler, you have this too. Remember that I wanted to uh, I wanted to add some more uh, 
wanted to add some more um more things to the to the test config for example no unused local so let's just uh dive deeper into this function all right so in here uh, i'm basically doing a couple of things uh, i'm reading the ts config base json remember now we are in the context of an angular project right so i can assume there is a type ts config base json in the top level of the of the of the tree so i read that that brings gives me a buffer assuming everything is good i uh i use an utility function parse json ast uh, from uh, Angular Dev Kit Core, and this basically gives me the JSON, uh, the TS Config JSON as an abstract syntax tree. Uh, if you don't know about abstract syntax trees, those are basically the representation of a, a, a program uh, or yeah, so a, a software project basically, uh, and it basically allows you to easily manipulate uh, the source code of the program without worrying about things like styling, basic non-semantic semantic, uh, things become an issue because the formatting step comes later. So you just get only the tokens to manipulate. So in this case, I'm reading in loose mode. I get it. Uh, check that it's an object. Uh, and then I use a tree begin update to get a recorder. A recorder is basically think of it like um, like Git, basically where you 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 do changes using the recorder, but they are not applied until you commit it. So if you look at the end here, I got commit update, which is basically I record changes to the recorder, which is tells the recorder I want to apply these kind of changes, but until I commit them, nothing is going to happen. All right. So the first step I do here is I apply the TS strictest settings. So this in this case is a subscript. So I have a list of all the settings I would, I would like to set to true. Uh, some of these settings basically flow under strict, but I want them to be explicit so that uh, I can uh, choose to turn some of them off as needed. So everything here is going to be set to true. Same, uh, the same thing goes to on the Angular compiler setting. In this case, it's just the two, two settings. So in case somebody uh, creates a project and forgets to apply uh, this dash dash strict, this schematic here is gonna apply it for me. All right, um, so let's try running this. Uh, let's try running this uh, on, the, on this project. As I said, if I look again, I get status. It's not in there. I'm not close this window. Okay, we connect. Close the side of the menu. All right. All right. So if I go ngr and point to the project I have. So this project is K30 ng starter. Leaves. Uh, I, can, I can do a relative uh, path. And uh, OSS K30 ng starter. As I said, I'm not pointing to any schematic because ngr is going to look for the ngr schematic. So if I run that, uh, this is running, so it's it's been rebuilt after. Good. If I run that, it should accept to see a modified um, TS config. Let's give it a moment there. All right, so this says it, uh, it has updated TS config base, JSON. Okay, let's look at the uh, git diff here. Status. So this tells us that three, three packages have been changed. All right, so if we look at git diff. By the way, I'm using a git plugin called diff so fancy if you're wondering how the, why this is looking uh, so nice. Uh, so uh, here I can see that this config base below here suddenly added all the 
qualities weren't there before. Same goes for the Angular compiler options. Uh, the strict template basically is a collection of that turns all these all these on. But again, I said I like to have them explicit so I can choose which ones are turned on and off depending on the complexity of the project. All right, so you see this is working. Now let's. Uh, I'm going to remove the changes here, and then there is nothing. I'm going to enable the next one, which is adding PDA. All right, so calling PDA, what does that entail? Let's look at the code a little bit. All right, so here I just create a map of uh, the properties I want to to install. Uh, I'm explicit about the versions I use. And then I just loop over them. I use another utility function uh, to get the basically the current uh, package from the uh, or the current dependency in the tree. Check the dependency version matches what I want. And if it does, I just keep over it. And if it doesn't, I use another utility function, add package JSON dependency, uh, where I basically provide uh, the properties, uh, the key values from this uh, map here as values. And then I tell it to overwrite. If, if there was a, a previous version, I want it to be overwritten. Once that is done, I also have some configuration files to deal with. This is another concept. So um, schematics have a concept of templates. So in this case, uh, here I have uh, two templates. These are just files, normal files with the, with the contents that I want. And then I uh, call, I use the apply function, utility function. I give the URLs of the files and then I, uh, Pass the apply template, uh, apply template uh, function. This one is the one you use when you do like uh, when you generate like uh, a new component uh, using Angular Generate. Usually, you pass in the functions that are used to transform uh, the templates. So the templates are plus placeholders so that your 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 values can override the placeholders. So if I had anything to configure out past the functions here. And then I would change the templates to uh, to reflect that. Again, looking at the Angular schematics, uh, you will basically see how, how that works. And then uh, at the end, I move uh, uh, the files uh, to, uh, to, this, uh, to this path. So in the case I'm moving the files, to the root directory of the, of the project. What this does, it creates a new tree. So at the end of it all, I have to merge that tree with, an existing, with the existing tree. That's why I call merge with, and I pass in uh, the prettier config source. And basically that's all there is to it. So uh, let's see. Good. Uh, here, uh, I'll just enable these two. But what I want to do is at the end of it all, uh, I don't know if anybody noticed that after when you do an ngi, it actually, it actually installs the dependency, basically the schematic as a dependency in your project. But I, I'm using this dependency just to transform my source code. I don't want it to be to remain as a dependency. So at the end of it all, I want to remove this package as a dependency. So there is a helper function called remove package JSON dependency that I can call and pass in the name of the dependency. In package JSON, I called my project ng starter. Should I call it cat 30 ng starter? But in this case, since, since that's the name, that's the name I use in here. And then at the end of it all, I call, uh, I add a new task to the schematic, that's a new concept too. Tasks are things that the schematic can do for you. And as, as far as I know, um, I know, there are limit, a limited set of tasks that you can uh, call. 
In this case, we are calling node package install task. The, what this is going to do is basically is going to figure out what package manager you're using. So you're using npm is going to use npm. If you're using yarn, it's going to use yarn, and then it's going to install the dependencies for you. And since we've just modified uh, the list of dependencies, we actually haven't installed anything. So we basically uh, call this to install the dependencies. Right. So I'm just going to run this quickly. I'm running out of time. Uh, again, let me get status to make sure everything is clean. Run the command again. And I would expect this to result. All right, so it's uh, it's added the files here. It's changed the TS config uh, base JSON, it's changed the package JSON, and now it's installing the packages as a consequence of the task to be added. Everything's successful. Now, we look at the diff. I uh, can see the files that have changed. I can uh, do a git diff here. And then look at the hands. So as you see now, there's no uh, dependencies to ng dash starter because it's been removed. The added packages, the TS base config, and the unlock to reflect that. All right. So uh, my message to you is don't let, uh, just because uh, there is not a lot of documentation or it seems a little bit hard to, to dive into schematics, uh, if you have a problem that you need to solve and you deem schematics to be a good uh, solution for it, don't let it discourage you. There's there's a lot of people using schematics now that you will find uh, you will find uh, references to what you want to do, and there are people ready to help. Uh, if you have any uh, problem regarding to what I just showed, I'm happy to help out. Uh, you can reach out to the uh to the angular team or just post uh you know ask the community there's help to be found all right uh and that was my time all right uh thank you so much fabrice uh let's see if there are any questions uh Mayor says that was very informative. Thank you. Got thumbs up. Brandon loves schematics. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he and Tim were, are mostly uh, in charge of schematics uh, in, in, in Direct's project. Uh, awesome. Let's see if we have any questions. Uh, uh, but while we're waiting for questions, uh, I'll, I'll, I guess, uh, I guess, oh, there's one already. Okay. Are there any utility libraries to make uh, using them easier? Hmm. Um, there is one I found. I think it's called schematic-utilities. Um, if you Google that, you should find that. Um, it's basically somebody who basically took together the basic uh, utilities from Angular and kind of builds some helpers on top of that. Um, so that's something to look into, uh, definitely. And I guess it's also a kind of a challenge to the Angular team to see if it's easier to create some high-level APIs to make it easier to do some common things. Uh, kind of like if one looks through the community and say, okay, what are the what are people doing with schematics? What are the common themes? And build some higher-level library. Actually, the community can do that too. So it doesn't have to be the Angular team uh, doing that. Yeah, nice. Yeah. It, it from me, I guess the question. Well, okay. Um, what? Are, okay, this is another good question. What else have you used the schematics for? Uh, for in my case, really, this was the uh, kind of my uh, my first uh, uh, to say contact with schematics. I haven't done anything more than this. But I said in my in my own uh, my own journey. I like to have a challenge. So because I had a need. Then I found mm -hmm. the need to kind of uh, to kind of dive deeper and try to get to know. And then as soon as I did that, I started seeing things like, oh, what a moment! I, can, I knew, can I? I could, I can do that. I can do that. Then you know, then then becomes it, it you know becomes fun to you know to work with and just be trying to figure out 
how can I break this? How, you know, how like, then, yeah, then you just get it, you, you get, you get going. So I'm still in my early kind of days and there's still a lot on my list uh, of things to do on the project I just showed. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right. So the other question we have is where do you keep them? Uh, NPM or local or schematics themselves? Uh, so the project I showed is still local, but uh, I would uh, assume uh, you can basically have it as a, um, is that a private NPM package or a public one, whatever, because then as, you, as soon as you do ng add, it's going to basically look to NPM and, and download the project. So you mm -hmm. can, I think it depends on your situation, but I would say mostly if it's a, something open that can be used by a lot of people it doesn't have to be that you can put on npm and be ready to go nice awesome yeah. all right uh don't think we have any more questions uh i know it's uh pretty late in norway right now right it's, it's <laughs> what almost midnight right now yeah yeah half past 11. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right thank you so much for for coming and uh, sharing your knowledge for with uh, our angular toronto audience